Found on here, and, and I and I seen, you know, I seen that Israel. He was, you know, he's speaking to Israel, and I seen that they were in a backslidden state. You know, they were in a backslidden state, but but yet, you know, like like even while I was praising, you know, Yah was still speaking to me, and he was like, yeah, they're in the back. Slip and state, but you know it's it's not it's not as if they just totally forsook me. They're still going through the motions. Yeah. See, and it, and it's a lot of people in modern day uh, Christianity, and and I, I use that that term broadly. Uh, Christianity slash messianic. Uh, messianics, you know, slash Hebrew roots, slash whatever, you know. Uh, I'm speaking about everyone that that uh, adheres to the Messiah as their Adonai and their their Malik, their King. You know, many folks are simply going through the motions, and, and this is where Judah found themselves. And we're going to get into that. And just, you know, keep that in the back of your mind or on the shelf of your mind that, you know, that this is really speaking of, about them going through the motions. So Isaiah chapter 1, we're going to jump right in. To this. Get my clicker clicker. All right. <laughs> I'm my first reader read Yeshua Yahoo chapter one verses one through five, please. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Azor, Jatham, Azor, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hear, O heaven, and give air, O earth, for Yahuwah hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know my, no, my people does not consider. A sinful nation a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corrupted. They have forsaken Yahuwah. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Why should he be stricken anymore? He will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. Yes, yes. Uh, first of all, Yeshayahu, his name means salvation of Yah, as if that's not revelatory in and of itself. His father named um, Amos, not to be confused with Amos, you know, uh, the, the minor prophet, someone different. His name means strong. So together we see, you know, Yeshayahu is the epitome of strong salvation or savior of Yah, you know, and, and and he came with a revelation with with a uh, a re not only a revelation but a word from Yah that's that speaks more directly concerning the salvation of Yah than just about any other prophet. But that said, it says 
notice how how long he was prophesying. You know, he went through the reign of four kings: Isaiah, Yotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. You know, he lived a very long life. You know, if you add up those reigns, it's over a hundred years. So, you know, he was. Uh, you know, that's not to say that he lived through the full reign of all of them, but you know, he must have. His, his ministry must have touched each one of them in some type of way. Okay, he, he starts off, he says, Hear, O heaven, and give ear, O, o earth, for Yahuwah has spoken. You know, as always, to give ear to God speaking. He says, He has nourished and brought up children, yet they have rebelled against him. Verse 3 says, The ox know of his owner. Behind his master's crib, but Israel do not know, my people do not consider. Uh, what does he mean by the ox know of his owner? Well, that's pretty self explanatory. He knows who his owner is, you know, when he calls him, you know, he will come, he will adhere to him. And the donkey, knowing his master's crib, he knows who feeds him, he knows. Where to go when he when he gets home? But Yah is speaking of Israel. And he's saying they don't know, they don't lost sight of who their owner is. They don't lost sight of who they're supposed to be serving. And when they get hungry, they don't consider where the source of their food has been coming from. As a matter of fact, they got it twisted into thinking that it was coming from places other than where it was coming from. It was coming from Yah all along. He was providing for them and keeping them all along, but they had got it twisted. They got confused as to who their L was because they was mixing and, and, and adulterating his word so that they began to worship other Elohim and have them rule over their lives. And, and they were mistakenly thinking that it was them that was feeding them. It was them that brought them out of Mitzrayim. It was them all along. See, they had got confused. And it's real easy to get confused when, when you have more than one master. Hence the Messiah would say, you know, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. You can't love two masters, rather you because rather you'll love the one and hate the other. But this is exactly what they were doing. This is exactly what, what many people are doing now today. And the sad part about it is they're just like Israel that God is speaking of here. They know if not their owner. And they don't know where to go to get fed. Yah goes on in verse 4 and says, A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken Yahuwah. That is exactly the state that most so-called believers are in. Says, Yahuwah have provoked the, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel into anger. They are all going away backward. They doing things backwards you know it, it, just like you see today you, you, you see many of those who profess to love Yah refuse to accept his Savior huh that doesn't even make sense and then you had those who do accept his, uh, his Savior refuse to accept his Torah his teachings and instructions when they should be going forward, they're going backwards. Verses 6 through 9 says, For the soul of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your lands 
your land strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. The daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except Yahuwah Zavaot had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been as Gomorrah. In the modern day state of believers is no different. It's just that they don't realize it, even as Israel here didn't realize it. They're wounded and battered and beaten of Yah from the sole of their foot even unto their head. Yah has been constantly rebuking them and disciplining them and trying to get them to, to acknowledge him. And they just shrug it off as bad luck that they're going through this. You know, or something to that effect. They don't realize that they are, as a daughter of Zion, they're, they're left as a cottage in a vineyard, which speaks of them being alone, being surrounded by, by things that are not like them. The daughter of Zion is left as a cottage. The daughter of Zion is the righteous one. But the righteous one is left as a cottage in a vineyard. The, they're in the vineyard, but there's no one else around. That's why this is, seems so, like such a lonely walk. Because it's few and far between of those true daughters of Zion. Those who are truly seeking and thirsting after righteousness. They're like a lodge in a garden of cucumbers. You have one, one lowly lodge and you have cucumbers for as far as the eye can see. And those daughters of Zion, they're all, they're all looking like, you know, well, where's everyone else? Where are the others? Even as a besieged city, everyone around them is is rebuking them. Everyone around them is saying, oh, it don't take all that. Oh, you don't have to do that. That's done away with this, that, or the other. Oh, that wasn't the Messiah. That was somebody else. You know, we, we still waiting on them to come. You know, I'm telling you, it's, it's no different today than it was when Isaiah wrote this. Let me have my next reader read Yeshua 1, 10 through 13. Hear the word of Yahuwah. Ye rulers of Sodom, Sodom, give ear unto the law of our Elohim, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith Yahuwah? For I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations, incense. Incense is an, is an abomination unto me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even a solemn meeting. Here it is. Isaiah tells him again, hear the word of Yahuwah. Ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear, ye people of Gomorrah. Even today, the so-called believers, they act like those of Sodom and Gomorrah. They do everything under the sun and still want to hang Yah's name upon them. Even though they're not saying or doing any of the things that Yah said that his people would do or should do, they still want to call themselves by his name and bring discredit to his name so much so that... Some people frown up when they hear you say you're a Christian or, or you're a messianic or, or you, you even believe in the word, period. You know, it used to really mean something. When a person said that there was expectations concerning how they acted, there was expectations concerning how they would act in different situations and circumstances. Now you can't tell the difference from the heathen or the believer. 
And it's not supposed to be like that. You know, here in verse 11, y'all are saying, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith Yahoo? He says, he's full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of bed beasts, and he delight not in the blood of bullocks or the lambs. You know, he says, when you come, be, come to appear before me, you know, you come in before me, who have required this at your, at your hand to tread my course? Who asked you for this? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, he didn't ask us for this. You know, he asked us for righteousness. So here in verse 13, he says, bring no more vain oblations. No more vain offerings. That word oblations is minka, you know, gifts, offering. This word vain is shav number 77, 23, meaning destroying. It comes from uh, 77, 22, show, show, ah meaning to rush over. So it, it, it's actually, when you look at the picture behind it, it's like it's like something rushing over something to destroy it. So in other words, you know, they were bringing stuff that was destroyed, that was, that was decadent, you know, as in offering them as gifts. You know, Hence, he says, bring no more vain oblations. Don't bring no more destroyed, no more ruined gifts. Your incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of the assemblies, I cannot away with it. It's iniquity. See, he didn't have a problem with, with the uh, offerings, the, the, the goodwill offerings of, of the righteous. He had a problem with the iniquity. He even says, even the solemn meeting, even his feast, they don't do right. But what, it, make, it makes you wonder, what were they doing? We can go to Malachi chapter 1 and we can find out what they were doing. Because by the time Malachi stepped on the scene, they were still doing it. Malachi 1, 6 through 8 says, a son honor of his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? We call him Heavenly Father, but yet we don't give him the honor of a father. We don't honor our father as Torah teaches us. If I be a master, where is my fear? If I'm your Adonai, then how come you don't fear what I say? How come you don't fear me? How come when I say something, you act like I didn't say anything? Say of Yahuwah Zavahot unto you, O priest that despise my name, and ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? The Isis leaders, they, 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 they take a lot of blame on this. It says, ye offered polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? And that ye say the table of Yahuwah is contemptible. And ye offer the blind for sacrifice. You know, you let, any, you let the people bring any and everything, and you accept it. Even though you know what my words say, you know that they're to bring an unblemished animal as a sacrifice, yet you're going to take the blind from them and sacrifice it. Is it not evil? Is that not wicked? Is it not wrong? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Now here it is. I'm supposed to be your heavenly father. I'm supposed to be your master, but you giving me, you're not giving me the best of what you have. You're giving me stuff that's 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 blind and lame and sick. Now, what if I was really eating this? What are you trying to do to me? Hence, Yah says, offer it now to thy governors. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, say if Yahweh is thy vote? Give it to the men that's ruling over you. See how they like it. Serve them with some lame and sick meat. See, and this is the equivalent of what the believers are, are doing now today. They're not coming before the Most High El and worship him, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. They're worshiping him any way they feel like it. And Yah has always made it known that he was an L of specificity. He was an L that 
that liked things a certain way. He wanted his gifts, his offerings to be in a certain manner. They're even they're not only to be certain things that he that he wanted. He wanted them certain things a certain way. They had to be perfect. They had to be without blemish. And then even that wasn't good enough. They had to be offered in a certain manner. Then their blood had to be sprinkled in a certain manner. They had to be killed in a certain manner. Everything had to be in accordance to his word. You couldn't do it your way. He wanted done his way. And we have to get back to doing things his way and stop doing things our way. Because these are the things that Israel of old was doing. These are the very same things that many believers are doing today. They think it's okay because they come to church once a week. And those who call themselves diligent twice or three times. It's more to it than that. This is this is not something you do a few times a week. It's something that you live every day of the week. If anything, it's just the opposite. You stop working on things and just start worshiping and praising and giving honor to him on his day. But all through the week, you're working, doing his work. His works. People got it backwards. Let me have my next reader read Isaiah 1, 14 through 17. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you, yea. When ye make me make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make that make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Be for the widow. Okay. Come on. Um, he's, he's saying your new moons, your your feasts. You know they, they you know they get on his nerves. You know that's basically what he's saying. You know you spread your hands. You know uh, in worship, and he say, I hide my eyes from you. He turned his head. Even when you pray, he said, I hear, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. And that's real crucial that we get that because a lot of people don't realize that, yes, there are some situations and circumstances that can, that can take place in this life where Yah will not hear your prayers. There are some situations and circumstances that, that can that can be in place that will cause him to turn his eyes from us. We need to acknowledge that. But he tells us, you know, how to how to get back in, in, in grace. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the will. See, right here he says, learn to do well. Now he's teaching us how to do well. Seek judgment. What does he mean by judgment? Judgment is mishpat, number 4841. It means a verdict, a sentence, a formal decree. In other words, look to his verdicts, his sentences, his formal decrees. That is his divine law when you want to do something. Make sure it's all right with him first. Relieve the oppressed. This word relieve is I share numbers 833. It means to go straight, to set right. And this word oppressed is kamats. It means the oppressor, the ruthless. So this actually would be better translated to set right the oppressor. So in other words, if you see someone oppressing someone, and they're out of line, they're not right, you're to set them right. He goes on to say, judge the fathers. Now this word judge is different from the judgment of above it. This is shafat, meaning to judge, to govern, to vindicate. 
He's saying, judge the fatherless. Now, those are that's a part of that group that he wanted us to always look out for. The fatherless and the widows. I mean. So he says, Shaphat, judge, govern, vindicate the fatherless. See, because the fatherless, they don't have anyone ruling over them. You know, they don't have an earthly father to rule over them, to, to, to tell them what's right and what's wrong, to teach them to be a man and, and what a man does and what a man don't do. Of course, mom's going to do the best job that she can. But sometimes it just takes a man to raise a man. And he's telling them, judge the fatherless. Let them know where he out of line at. Make sure that he knows that, hey, someone's going to hold him accountable to his actions. Don't just let him run wild. If he's, if he's in the right, then you are to stand up and vindicate him because he doesn't have a father to stand up on his behalf. So if you see one of the fathers getting railroaded, then you're to stand in the gap and you're to help him. But likewise, if you see one of them that's wrong, then you're also to stand up and speak to that wrong. Hence it's also translated as government. You know, they help govern their lives when they don't have no one there to govern for them. I know a lot of believers nowadays say, well, we're going to let, we're gonna let the uh, judge at 36 District Court judge on. But that's not the way it was meant to be. That's not Yah's way. That might be society's way, but that's not Yah's way. See, we have to stop going through the motions and get back to learning to do well. Well, I do do well. Do well in accordance to Yah's word. What he sees well to be. Not what we feel well to be. We're also to plead for the widow. This word plead is rub or root in the Hebrew. Number 73, 78, it means to strive or contend. So in other, see, because the widow doesn't have anyone to strive or contend on her behalf. So if we see a widow being misused, we're to strive or contend on her behalf. We're to stand up for her. And vice versa. If she's wrong, we let her know that too. And my next reader read. That's Yahoo 1, 18 through 22. Come now and let us get a reason together, saith Yahuwah. Through your sin, though your sins may be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though, through, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of your Lord has spoken it. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it. But now murderers, thy silver is become drunk, thy wine mixed with water. Okay. You know, so Yah, you know, he, he's, he's, uh, He's tired. He's saying, come on, let us reason together. You know, uh, he's saying, even though the sins be like scarlet, they should be as white as snow. I'm willing to forgive you. But there's a condition on that forgiveness. And that, that condition is in verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. This word willing is Abba, number 14, meaning to breathe after. Figuratively, it means to be willing. It literally means to breathe after. In other words, he's saying, if ye breathe after or live to be obedient. You know, because to breathe is to live. When he blew the breath of life into Adam, he became a 
living soul. So if you breathe after something, you're, you're living after it. You're living for that. You know, and, and that's truly how our lives is to be. Our, our lives is to be, we're to be living to obey our master or living to please our heavenly father, to be acceptable in his sight. And if we do that, you shall eat the good of the land. But there's always a flip side to the coin, is it not? Verse 20. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of Yahuwah hath spoken. How is the faithful city becoming horrible? It was full of judgment and righteousness, it, but now murders. You know, we can say the same thing about the city we live in now today. You know, where the righteous is, you know, they're, they're, they're supposed to be, you know, a higher standard of living. But not, not so today. He says, the silver has become dross and the wine mixed with water. What does he mean by that? What does he mean by the silver? And it becomes dross. Well, the silver speaks of Yah's word. And the dross speaks of wickedness. We learn this in Psalms 12.6. It says, the words of Yahuwah are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. So we learn here that Yah's pure words are as silver tried. Also, Proverbs 10.20 if the tongue of the righteous or the tongue of the just is as choice silver, the heart of the wicked is a little work. So we see righteous words, they're like silver, but they become dross. What does he mean by dross? Psalms 119, 119. Says, Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimony. Also, Proverbs 26 23. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shield covered with silver dross. So, in other words, he's saying that the pure words that he's given them has. Wickedness all over. And that's just what folks do now today. Even though they had a word of Elohim, they still do wickedness right over it. There used to be a time that people respected the word so much that they had put it away before they even do something or say something out of line. They wouldn't even say anything or do anything while it was out in the open. Yeah. Anybody remember those days? Yeah. You know, if, if, if uh, grandma had uh, the, the word open on the table, you, you, you better not even look wrong. And then before she gets started, here, put this up. <laughs> but the point is, they have reverence for the word of Elohim. His first thing with somebody to say, you know, if they thought you was lying, they pull out the Bible, swear on this. And a person was lying, they really wouldn't do it because they revered the word. Even when they didn't revere anything else, they revered the word, they revered the Bible that much. And hence, when they were telling the truth, I, I swear on a stack of Bibles. You know? Word don't carry that type of reference, reverence with people, uh, with, some, with most people anymore. I'm not gonna say all people, but with most people, it doesn't, doesn't carry that reverence anymore. They don't have that type of reverence for it. You know? So we see that the silver speaks of Yah's, Yah's word and the dross of wickedness. So Yah is saying that your pure words have become dross, they've been covered with wickedness. Thy wine mixed with water. What does the wine speak of? 
The wine speaks of joy and happiness. We read in Yermiyahu 48, 33, and joy and gladness is taken from the plentiful field and from the land of Moab, and I have caused wine to fail from the wine presses. The joy and gladness is taken and the wine has filled from the wine presses. None shall tread with shouting. Their shouting shall be no shouting. Also, yes, Yahoo 24, 11, there is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. The same way it happened to them of old is the same way it is happening to us today. And that is, it came about from the leadership. As we see in Yeshua 123, thy princes are rebellious and, and companions of thieves. Everyone love of gifts and follow of after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither do the cause of the widow come unto them. And when you look at the leadership of the so-called government nowadays, you see this to be true, you know, even nowadays in grand fashion. The rulers are rebellious and the companions of thieves. You got enough money, you can buy any of them. <laughs> Everyone, love of gifts and follow up after rewards. That's why Yah said, you know, don't take any gifts. Uh, they weren't supposed to be doing that anyway. They judge not the fatherless. They just let them do whatever they want to do. And then when they do whatever they want to do, then they lock them up and throw away the key. Neither do the cause of the widow come unto them and fend for themselves. Now they make you they call it food stamps on the bridge car down, down the day. Uh, section 8. Verses 24 through 27. My next reader, please. Therefore says the Adonai, Yahuwah of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, I, I will eat me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy rock, and take away all thy all thy ten. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her coverage with righteousness. Hallelujah. You know, I really do believe that even though many other believers are just going through the motions now today, that Yah is actually in the midst of doing just this. What we read in 25 and 26. That is that, that he has turned his hand upon us and he is purely purging away the dross and taking away all the all the ten. He's restoring his judges as at the first and his counselors as at the beginning. And when he's done, there will be a city of um, called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converse with righteousness. What does he mean, redeemed with judgment? When we look at this word redeemed, it's Pada in the Hebrew number 6299, it means to sever. That is, to ransom, to release, to preserve. Now, I was looking at this and I was I was saying, man, that sounds, you know, that sounds pretty much like what Yah said, you know, and, um, and, you know, I couldn't help but think about it. We were in Isaiah and he was quoting Isaiah 61. In Luke 4, 18, he says, The Spirit of Yahuwah is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. See, a lot of people are just going through the motions, and they don't realize that Yahshua actually performed 
this. He actually done this. He was quoted saying this some 2,000 years prior to today. And when Isaiah prophesied it, it was, I don't know, however long it was, it was hundreds of years prior to him saying it. You know, but most people do not equate, they don't get the, they don't get this understanding. They don't, they don't understand that the spirit of Yahuwah was upon Yahshua. That he did, had anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. And they do realize he did do that. And they do realize he, he sent them to heal the brokenhearted. But this part, they don't really get. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. They seen when he said where he healed the blind, but to set at liberty them that are bruised. He really did deliver the captives and set us at liberty. Those of us that are, this really speaks to being oppressed. He really did set us at liberty. Those of us who are oppressed. He did deliver the captives. And this is the part of the gospel that has been lost, so to speak, that people don't realize or, you know, refuse to acknowledge. You know, what he's speaking of here is really the kingdom of Elohim that was at hand. You know, it says that here in verse 27, Isaiah 127, it says, Zion shall be redeemed with judgment. Now, we already went over this word judgment, and we know that it speaks of Yah's divine, his divine laws, his decrees. His decrees, his divine law, his, I'm missing one, his, uh, his verdicts, his sentences. See, and what people don't realize is that with the law of Yahshua, with his laws, those were his mishpat. Those were his verdicts, his sayings, his decrees. And that is what you're redeemed by. Those are those, those are that, that, that's that silver, that, that um pure words of silver that was tried in a furnace. That's what we're redeemed by. The teachings and instructions of Messiah. And that's what, that's what people they're not realizing today. You know, because, yes, the gospel really is like that silver. It's like that, that half shekel that everyone had to, had to give in order to be redeemed. The rich didn't give more, and the, poor, and the poor didn't give less. It was required of everyone to have that half shekel. That's like the gospel concerning the Messiah. But you still... And you still have to go on with judgment. You have to walk in his teachings and instructions. That's the silver, that half shekel that redeems us, is the words of Messiah. You know, and, and I don't think people are really getting that. I don't think they're really getting that. You know, that's how he set us free. He set us free to serve him. And, that, and that's another thing that people get it twisted. They think because he set us free that they're free. No, you're still a servant. Now, don't get it twisted. You just, you know, you get to switch masters. You don't get to not be a servant. You don't get to, to be your own master. You, hence, you're redeemed. You're brought back. You're ransomed. You're still being paid for you know, so you're still in servitude. <laughs> but you get to choose whom you're going to serve. Yeah. Whereas you was locked in to a certain master, now you have a choice of masters. And you can choose to let Yah reign over your life. 
And how literal you want to choose that is up to you. But I tell you, he wants to reign over every facet of your life. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't really want a bunch of believers that's just going through the motions. Just as these people were going, they still were keeping the Sabbath. They were still going to the feast. They were still offering sacrifices. They were still doing all the things that looked religious. Yet, their sacrifices weren't acceptable. Their feast was abominable. Their offerings was things that Yah just got to the point that he was just so fed up he didn't want to look at them no more. He didn't want to hear their prayers. He didn't want to, he turned his head when they began to, to pray to him and, and, and worship him and praise him. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to be in that camp. Yeah. You know, the Messiah, he has redeemed us and he redeemed us with judgment. He redeemed us. He severed us from our old master. He ransomed us from our old master. He's released us from our old master. And he will preserve us from our old master if we allow him to rule over us, if we choose to serve him. Hence, the word says, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. Don't you know whoever you yield yourselves to, that's whom you serve it? That's who your master is? But a lot of people, they don't really think about those, those scriptures. They just gloss over them. When you're not doing the will of Elohim, then you're serving the other one. Because where Yah has his commandments, Hasatan has his one command. <laughs> he only has one, but it's one big one. His one commandment is do as thou wilt. Yah says, do as I tell you. But Hasatan says, do as you please. The choice is yours. <laughs> you know, but he's redeemed us. Our Messiah has redeemed us. He has severed us from, from, from Hasatan. He has ransomed us. He has released us. He will preserve us if we pay our half shackle. If we allow his precept, his sayings, his teachings and instructions to rule over our lives. And if we let him choose to serve him over Mammon and and and, and Hasatan and, and his camp. It goes on in verse 27, it says her converts, Zion will be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. You know, so in other words, what actually what, what you're seeing here is a picture of the ecclesia and the believers, the ones that they go out and convert. You know, even the Gentiles and, and everyone else. We see in Matthew 18.3, the Messiah said, you know, this is after he took a little child and he brought, brought it before his apostles. And he, he said, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, we we can't just go through the motions. We gotta we have to literally choose to serve Yah and become his little children and depend on him for everything. You know, then you know when we then when we when we when we think about his mercies that he re, that he renew in our lives day after day, and when we then we can really see how faithful he is. See, if you're never depending on him wholeheartedly, then you'll never really see how faithful he is. You know, you know that's that's why I take off my hat to Bailey and Chris family because they they depend on him wholeheartedly. If y'all don't let him come through for him, you know, then you know no fool gets to go on the table. Am I right? <laughs> you know, it's you know. The bills don't get paid, am I right? You know, it's because they're trusting in Yah. You know, likewise with myself. You know, 
it's only through Yah. If he's not, if he's not at work, then I'm not at work. Because I'm dependent upon him. You know, and that's how he want, he wants us yielded over to our lives yielded over to him in every aspect across the board. You know, he don't want this little everything but this little part. He wants that little part too. That's how we're we're redeemed with his mishpah, with his decrees, with his verdicts, his sentences. We're converted with righteousness. What is righteousness? Adhering to his word. That's what righteousness is. Verses 28 through 31. And the destruction of the transgressors of the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake Yahuwah shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired, and he shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf faded, fatal, and as a garden that have no water. And the strong shall be as toe, and the maker of it a spark. And they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. So what is y'all talking about? They shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired. And ye shall be confounded for the garden which ye have chosen. What he's actually speaking to is uh, the high places in the groves that you read that they were worshiping at throughout the um, the word. You know, the oak was considered to be the tree that represented Zeus or or Jupiter. You know, which is the same character in different different cultures or different languages. But the oak rep represented. Zeus or Jupiter, you know, and they used to do all type of unseemly acts up under these oaks. Oftentimes, you know, they were carved into the male phallic symbol and they would put in, you know, they, they would make a garden around it, you know, and the garden represented Ishtar, you know, and that was the that was the groves, you know, and you know, they would do what they did that they shouldn't have been doing. Say a lot. You know, but Yah says for those who do that, who trust in, in, in that, you know, the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together, and they shall forsake Yahuwah. And they that forsake Yahuwah shall be consumed. He says, for that he'll make them even as an oak who leaf fade, and as a garden that have no water. I don't know if you ever seen a garden with no water, but my brother he had made a garden. He decided not to water it. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a comely sight. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you, if you threw a match over there. <laughs> As he says, and the strong should be as toe. Toe kind of speaks to, you know, uh, just the gathering of um, of twigs or, or even fabric or whatever. But you know, when you do something, they, they was gonna burn. And the maker of it, a spark. You know, maybe even tumbleweed may even fit into that. And the maker of it, a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. And we know that the word. Uh, well, this is the word saying this, but the word elsewhere bear witness to this as well. You know, so, you know, if anything, you know, this is an admonition to Israel slash the believers slash the Christians slash the Messianics slash the Hebrew rootists, you know, to stop going through the motions and to start truly letting Yah rule and reign over their lives. Truly turn back to him. Stop doing the things that is unpleasing to him. You know, I never, you know, I'm so glad I didn't grow up in the church because I just, I can't even fathom, I can't understand 
you know, how you can, how, you, how, how somebody can throw away a whole half of the Bible. You know, and, and you got two of the largest groups throwing away the opposite halves. That is just so, you know, it, it's so perplexing to me. I just can't wrap my mind around it, you know. And but but many of them, you know, especially on the Christian side, they carry the whole Bible, but then they say half of it is done away with. <laughs> Why can't even carry the other half then? You know, but then they, they use the other half to support some things that they want that some points that they want to make. But then they in the second breath they say it's done away with. Well then how are you supporting your point with something that's done away with? It don't make sense. Or they say, okay, but you know, the tithe and that part is still good, but the rest of it, you know, you toss. You know, I, I can understand them saying that, but I just can't understand people believing that. You know, but I, I do understand that spirits do exist and that they uh, they play their part. They play their part, you know, and I understand the propaganda machine, you know, so I... I <coughs> I've come to understand it now, but in the beginning stages, I, I was just so lost with that. You know, a matter of fact, I was so lost. I was thinking that, you know, is it something I'm seeing, I'm not seeing? You know, but I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. Uh, that's all I have for you today. Prayer was a blessing. This time we're.